Good morning, everyone. Another day and another set of results from Southern Cross. This time we're reporting a single hole, the deepest hole on the property, hole 64, that went 1,013.5 metres. We've hit the highest, second highest grade result on the property in the deepest mineralised intersection on the property. That's 830 metres vertically below surface. That uh, result was 1.2 metres at 121.8 grams per tonne. So very high grade there. Uh, importantly, it was one of five high grade intersections. We hit over 200 metres of a mineralized zone that uh, overall averaged a gram, but the key point was that it had five high grade intersections within that. That very high grade hit that 121.6 grams over 1.2 metres was 115 metres down dip extension to, from hole 61. That was uh, the last press release that we put out. That was 12 metres at 7.4 grams gold equivalent in this case uh, with 0.3 metres at 249.5 grams. So good continuity though. The, the veins that we've been able to measure in the drill core, uh, in that orientated drill core, show that these things look continuous, big step outs, 115 metres, and was something like the next hole up was 380 metres away, um, hole 50, the, the top of hole 50, uh, which was the, the hole we put out last year. So, so big step outs, multiple zones, the second highest grade on the, the project and the deepest mineralisation to date. So uh, a real cracker of a drill hole. The key point about this uh, hole is that it continues to demonstrate how this epizonal system is transitioning to depth. There's uh, multiple uh, photos in the press release of visible gold, and that's what we want to see. That's uh, what we see when these systems transform basically from a, a gold antimony rich, brittle hosted zone in the top 800 metres and below that, uh, you get more brittle structures. You start to see stylolites developing. The antimony drops off. You've got much more arsenopyrite and free gold. And, and that's exactly what's happening here. So the opportunity to form the uber high grades that, that our neighbour down the road, Fosterville, saw and what made, us the high, what made it the highest grade gold mine uh, on earth for many years from 2018 to 2021 um, is is uh, in in the eyes of not only ourselves but others who are looking at this project. So that transition where we're starting to see more and more visible gold in these very high grades. But the 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 other key aspect is that it just shows the system continues and continues with great intensity to to develop those those very high grades with these big step outs. And uh, you now we just uh, look forward to putting more holes into this project, uh, no doubt. You can, you can expect us to take logical progressions here as we progress. There's two key drill orientations that gets a bit confusing for people when they start looking at this uh, structurally hosted, vein hosted uh, uh, gold system. And, and the two key results, uh, ways we drill this, um, remembering that it's an east-west dike breccia, so a big fault basically that is the the clear host of mineralization that's got a bigger alteration footprint. So we, over hundreds of meters, we can see that host position. It's a, a real, really a key aspect. And then crossing that regularly are these pancakes, these elongate pancakes in a northwest direction. And so when we want to test the the, the dike breccia structure and the high grades, we drill from the northeast to southwest, and that's what we did essentially with this hole sixty four. Um, and then if we want to drill within that dike structure and hit multiple vein zones, we drill from the west to the east or the east to the west. That was like hole 50. So you're going to get much longer intersections in the east-west orientation, but you can only get those once we've nailed down at depth the location of that, that dike breccia structure. So that's why we're drilling all these northwest holes to get pierce points at various depths down to a kilometre um, so we can uh, follow up those east-west or west-east drill holes. So, so you can expect us to take logical steps in, in, the, in that manner. Um, in, in that respect, we've got a, a stack of drill holes in the lab and, and being processed as something like 16 holes um, in, in, in process at the moment. Uh, we're also drilling not only in the key area over that one kilometre essentially where, where this drill hole came from, 
uh, but also seven and a half kilometres away out of the Tonstall's project. So, so big systems have big footprints and that's what this has and, and we're, we're starting to see it develop on all fronts. Um, let's see uh, what that Tonstall's drilling has when those results come out shortly. So now we're just going to turn to LeapFrog just briefly here. The system is... Uh, it's been drilled with all the drilling and some of the veins looking down in plan onto the LIDAR. So here's Christina here, Apollo out here, Golden Dyke and Rising Sun. This hole that we just released is this hole here, hole 64. So we'll focus on that. So we can turn this around and start to look down at that kilometre depth below surface. I'll turn the topography off just to make sure that it doesn't clog things up too much. So Christina, Golden Dyke. Apollo, uh, rising Sun and Apollo. Now you can start to see those northwest veins that we, we've logged. This is the hole down here, 64, we'll focus in on. But I just want to show you a couple of things. The one big benefit we have is that we know where the gold is hosted in this system. It's hosted in this dike breach here. It takes a bit of bulges and, and offsets itself through faulting probably. It's got a couple of little uh, splays off it, but that is one coherent body that we can target. And that's a, a key aspect of this, this system. The other is the frequency of these high-grade veins where we've drilled them. Um, I'll just turn it off and you can start to see the gaps again in this system all around through here, right? And even that gap through there that we're looking at um, here has just got this uh, planned hole on it. These are the red ones are the holes that we haven't uh, that are in the lab or, or being logged at the moment. So up until recently, that was a 200 metre gap even between the two major mineralized systems. So that uh, green dike is, is a key part of it, but also this yellow that I've just put on at the same time, that's the, that's the sulfidic zone. So that's where we start to see the alteration, the pyrite alteration with its sericite, plus or minus albite. So it turns into a very bleached rock. And that's a bigger footprint than the dike breccia itself. So uh, we don't have any information out through here. That's why you don't see uh, anything out through here. It's only where we've got our drilling that you can start to see these things. And, and uh, that's another key aspect, uh, this bigger alteration footprint that's 100 plus hundreds of metres wide uh, at, at, its, uh, at its average. So we'll take the dike model off and the sulphide model off and then just zoom in now. Um, you can start, I'll just take the, the, the uh, veins off so we can start to see. This is the hole. You can see there's uh, 168 grams there, gold in, in hole. And if we start to just measure from surface down, you can see that, you know, it's 830 metres thereabouts. I haven't maybe snapped to the exact surface there, but 800 metres down, um, you know, quite amazing in terms of just the, the big step out. Now, the other key point is, is if we zoom in here and just look at the hole, and, and this was the 200 metres from start to finish that it was mineralised, not continuously, but some very good grades right through there. Lots of the veins with intersected, so it's really the key point is, sorry, wrong one, um, the, the key point is here that, uh, you know, multiple veins within this hole, um, and some of them haven't even been drawn down to intersect that yet. So you can see here, that's the high grade and, and here's hole 61. So if I just measure, I have to take the vein off to make sure I grab the, the right thing here, but up up into hole 61, there's uh, that's a high grade there. So it's about 110 to 15 metres uh, step out from that hole alone. So there's the big step out, nothing in between. Uh, and then the other key point was that uh, there's, a, there's a higher grade zone. Um, if I put on the veins again, and I hope you can follow me, you can see there's another high grade vein here that uh, is in, this is hole 50. And then you can see it starts to go in behind here um, with hole 61. And that's the, that's the 60 metres depth that we talk about there. So between this hole here, 50 and hole 61 there's 60 meters there between the two high grades on that same structure so if we just put that back on again you can see it's the same structure so the structure itself is the strike length there is is 60 meters minimum thickness of course because we've got the very high grades intersected there so 115 meters here 60 meters here um, and then, you know, if you really want to start seeing how far we are stepping out, that same structure in hole 50 up the hole, 
uh, let's uh, let's say it's from here to here, you know, is three nearly 400 meters there. It might be this structure here that I might have chosen the wrong one, but it's still 360 to 400 meter step out. So big step outs. Uh, the structures look continuous as far as we can tell at this stage, and um, you know the system is just developing beautifully as uh, as we see here. And that, and you can see that this again is the deepest hole on the property. Hole 50 was previously. This has now exceeded that by 30 or 40 meters, or, or even longer if we take the the few grades down here at the bottom of hole 61. So you know, keep your eyes on those red holes that are still to come. And we're drilling more all the time and, and remembering that we're drilling 7.5 kilometres in that direction out to the east here um, that, uh, that I hope you can see my cursor. Thank you very much.